The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. Next on Life Today, President and Founder of Student Leadership University, Jay Strack, shares how God continues to direct his steps, spreading the love of Christ. I said, man, I'm at the stage where I'm not really worried about the next big thing. I want to capture the moment. If I, if I capture this moment, whether I'm talking to one person, whether it's somebody at the, uh, on an elevator or somebody that's helping me with my bags, or what, if, I, if I capture that moment, then that's all life is, or moments. about talking to you. I'm James Robinson. Betty and I are thrilled to have Jay Strack back with us. And, and you know, Betty and I are, we, we don't, she always says, why do you have to tell them I'm about the same age as you? Because they don't believe it. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> I know. And no, you're right. They absolutely <laughs> don't. But we've been married 56 years. And uh, I'm 75. So. And I'm 75. <laughs> So here's the thing that, and I've told you, I'm not trying to go somewhere. I've got heaven and eternal mm -hmm. uh, life, and I've got the, the ultimate kingdom to come where there's no enemy and uh, no hatred and division and death and destruction and uh, dissension and tension. Uh, that's, a, that's a given. But see, I live in the midst of this atmosphere of intense uh, animosity and hostility with a prince of peace in the midst of the storm and a shepherd that knows I've been sent uh, in the midst of ravaging wolves, wolves, but I've got the shadow of the shepherd who can lead in green pastures and calm any storm and still the waters and anoint our head with oil and meet our needs in the presence of accusers. But also know that we've been left here on a divine assignment, which is not to get out of here, but to bring him in here. Now think about this. He never would have taught us to pray amiss. He never would have prayed amiss, Jesus. And if in the model prayer, which we call the Lord's Prayer, the Lord's Prayer is actually John 17, but if in the model prayer, one of the key phrases, now I want you to, I want you to hang on this a minute, and we're going to talk to Jay Strack about this because he fully understands it. And I don't think a lot of professing Christians understand it. Jesus said, thy kingdom come. He announced it has come. The king is here. The kingdom is in you. It's not of this world, but it will impact this world with the weight of the present kingdom, the reality of it. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I don't think we understand what all that means, but part of it is that we love each other. We love and know the Father in relationship his word carries us, cleanses us, fills us. His spirit overflows, and he wants us to love each other. Mm -hmm. We see our children and grandchildren love each other. Mm -hmm. We're told that's rare too often. It's beautiful. It brings joy. Let's give the Father joy. Jay <laughs> Strack is here. Would you welcome Jay Strack? <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Good to be back. I hope you didn't mind that little Not a bit. brief message, but don't you think too many Christians are caught up, as were the disciples when Jesus is about to ascend. They're discussing he's going to set up this kingdom, the ultimate. He said, let's don't get hung up with that. It's not That'll for you. That'll take care nobody, of itself. Nobody yeah. knows. You be my witnesses. And boy, were they witnesses. And they witnessed to everybody of his kingdom. Jay, I think that a lot of folks over 50 have a tendency to kind of fold their cards or think, well, we're going to get out of here. You know, we're getting closer and closer. Betty and I are in our 70s. We're definitely in the latter part of our life. Sure. If we live to be 100, we're in the mm -hmm. last years of our life. Paul said to the New Testament Christians, you're in the last days. He was telling them how to live in the last days, even when he was departing right. and preparing the young people to live in last days. I believe that for people who are, say, 50 and over, if they would see that if we invest in kingdom life and in his will being done and his truth being shared in love, 
I believe we could see the most mighty, mighty manifestation mm. of the presence of God on this earth and the love of God and the power of the gospel. Do you agree with that? Oh, James, without question. You know, we're a, we're a day's march closer because we're marching. Mm -hmm. We're in the army, so we're marching. And I may be closer to the other side than if I turned around and went back. <laughs> but I believe with all my heart, this is one of the most fruitful, one of the most exciting days of my life. So many things that I work for, I'd run around and, and everyone's done, people in our audience, people watching by television, uh, you feel like you got a little thimble and you try to put out fires. You know, we hear about, we need a well, and then you go, oh my gosh, if I build a well, folks, will, the whole village will be, I mean, that'll change not just one person, but uh, right. a whole village. And so you begin to get excited about, well, you know, if I did that one thing, look at what the, but we usually ha feel like we got a thimble. Well, what happens when we get to be 50 and, or 60 and the Lord has blessed us, then all of a sudden we're at a stage where we're not worried about making our mark. You know, I'm not worried so much. Somebody asked me the other day, Jay, what's the next big thing? You're always doing something big. I said, man, I'm at the stage where I'm not really worried about the next big thing. I want to capture the moment. If I, if I capture this moment, whether I'm talking to one person, whether it's somebody at the, uh, on an elevator or somebody that's helping me with my bags, or what, if, I, if I capture that moment, then that's all life is, or moments. So we get these moments, and what an opportunity at our age to be able to say, and yes, we, we all like to go to the beach, but after a couple of weeks, I'm, a, I'm an old beach Florida boy, uh, you know, after a couple of weeks, I need to go do something. I mean, <laughs> I need to get back in the game. And so we all like the mountains. We all need a little time to catch our breath. And the Lord's blessed many of us so we can do it. But this is the stage where what I do today I'm seeing more fruit. Mm -hmm. And you know, you know, for example, I used to be happy winning a student to Christ. Now I'm happy when that student has gone on yes. and now runs one of the largest uh, nonprofits uh, in the country, in the world, when it comes to caring for AIDS. You know, Care for AIDS is a ministry and they do it in Kenya and Tanzania. That's one of our alumni, a young guy, came from a great home, but we were able to walk along beside him and take him places, introducing him to people. And all of a sudden, this young guy is touching thousands. So, uh, you know, if this is the stage of life when we do something, we can impact the next generation. And there's a great passage where it says that we must do what we must do so that the next generation may know and that they will tell it to their children who are not even yet born. So what we do today at this age by getting involved with causes or sharing our influence or James, a lot of what you're doing, sharing your wisdom, sharing what you've been through. You know, I, I like to hear, some, I was asked on a college student, we're asking about young people. They said, who do, you, who do you let influence you? I said, I'm not impressed by street signs. Everybody telling me which way to go. Here's what you ought to do. You're going the wrong way. Street signs. I'm impressed by builders. Show me somebody that's laying brick building a home for unwed mothers, building a facility to help traffic girls and traffic young men, feeding the poor, digging. I mean, show me the builders building that Christian school, that pregnancy center, you know, that church, that mission. I'm, so I'm influenced by those that are builders. And this is the stage of our life, James, where, and you've got folks listening right now, they get four or five of their friends together it would blow their minds what they could do together. Right. And you know, there are these kind of meetings going on all over the country where wealthy people and then folks that have been hardworking, they wouldn't consider themselves wealthy, but compared to the world, they're blessed. And so they look for we're, ways. We're blessed to bless. Exactly. And, and God, you know, you can't outgive the Lord. We know that's true. And again, that, that what I've had to learn just recently, I can't, I'm not responsible for what I, I'm, I can't do but I am responsible for what I can do. And so if I get involved with a group of other men or a group of other couples, and we decide we wanna make a difference in this area for the glory of God, and do something that'll last longer than us. So James, you know, there are preachers all over the world that you've touched, you and Betty have touched. Some of them have had the privilege of being in your home, but others of them have had the privilege of just being around. And what you do now, you know, a lot of times I used to go, why isn't James doing those big crusades? Well, now I can tell you, I'm grateful you're doing what you're doing <laughs> and the influence that you have. So motivating people our age to stay in the game, yeah. people that are, are in the Hall of Fame for what they've done. But man, let's still put the, let's get the cleats back on. Now, 
you've watched me speak to church leaders. You've no watched question. me speak to national leaders. No For question. our viewers' sake, am I faithful to the word? Am I forceful? Am I clear? Let me clarify one thing. Let me make something Waterford crystal clear. <laughs> he could read a phone book and it would be forceful. I just want you to know that, all right? And uh, I, I've never known him to be any other way and to, and to be perfectly, and, and for me to be serious for a moment. James, when what, what you do is, is kind of taught a lot of us that are, you know, we're, we're preachers, we're orators, we're, we're asked to speak, and, and that's critical and that's important. How can they believe in whom they haven't heard? But also to be able to sit and sit down with a group of businessmen and talk to them, just man to man. Not my agenda, but what's God's agenda? That's the thing, I think, to be honest with you, James, that's really kind of separated you, is that what would the Lord have us to do? Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just about, hey, I need you to be involved in my thing. That's why I, I really love going from the J. Strack Evangelistic Association to Student Leadership University. It wasn't about me. That's it right. was about kids. It was about the next generation. And then folks are, and then, James, you've done this for, obviously, I'm the recipient, but for 40 years, worrying about those that were coming along. How can I help them? How can I block for them and, and prepare them? And when they get that moment, let them be equipped to do that moment. You know, I've been given a lot of great opportunities, but I knew in the back of my mind, because I'd seen someone else in those opportunities, I'd been granted access. So when you sit down and talk heart to heart, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's personable, it's warm. God, God's really tendered your heart. There's no question about it, but yet it's always very personal and very forceful because there's a sense of urgency. Do you think it's effective? This, Have been, you seen it be effective? No question. I've been in a room with uh, 100 of the, what I would dare say, I mean, it kind of sounds presumptuous because people wonder why I was there, but 100 of some <laughs> of the who's who in ministry, you know. And uh, to be honest with you, a lot of us knew each other when we got in the room because we'd ran across each other when we were doing things with you, or in, you know, in your ministry. But the wake, we all leave a wake. You know, everybody that lives, we leave a, leave a wake. We go through a room, we've left it either better or, mm -hmm. or worse. So the wake has been a wake of influence. And I've, I've watched it. I've been privileged in some settings with some of the most powerful people in the world and some of the most uh, uh, influential people in the world. I've been privileged to be there where there have been groups of the businessmen in the room that you, uh, and women, uh, ladies, that, that you go, oh my gosh, look who's here. But also uh, my favorite is when uh, it's a bunch of key spiritual leaders from a lot of different denominations. And when I finally learned, James, something that uh, you uh, very forcefully and personally talked to me about a bunch, but we are in this together. And it's not, a, we gotta leave ego and logo at the door. And folks will only do that if some of the ones that are speaking are leaving their ego and logo at the door. That, that's what makes it a lot more effective, I think. I want our viewers to know that, that everything we do is undergirded by their prayers and their support. Hmm. And it's not ever a waste of time. It's not trying, you know, one of the things that, and I've actually had three presidents say this to me over the years. But they said, uh, you're scary. I said, why? They said, because you don't have an agenda. Now imagine when a president says, you don't have an agenda. And I said, well, I don't have a personal agenda. And uh, I don't really even have an agenda for you. But let me just settle it. I desire an agenda, God's agenda. Hmm. And uh, I've said to presidents that there's a nation that needs a father. We're a fatherless nation. There's only one father that knows best. Hmm. Does that sound like good advice? No, it's, a, it's incredible to say, advice. find that advice. Now, it's you've incredible. been in rooms with me with leaders where they've asked for wisdom. They've asked that we all join together and pray for wisdom. You've been asked to pray for leaders to have wisdom, haven't you? Yes, sir. Is it important for these viewers to realize their prayers for 
wisdom to surround our leaders because it's hard it's hard for wisdom to get in the room in a lot of religious settings and denominational settings and it's hard for wisdom to get in the room anywhere in Washington DC well there, there's no question and you know we have a lot of folks that are kind of remind me is it uh, Jamie on the progressive ads you know they're going around everybody's telling what they're doing and he goes present you know so there's some people that get in the room and they, you know, they have an opportunity, and but they're just present. They, when they say something, you know, it's not a word from God, and that's the thing I, I, I see that they want. They mm -hmm. want, you know, the, listen. Access. We all got pictures on our wall, and that's that's nice and et cetera. But when, the greatest thing you can do is walk along beside someone. So to walk along beside teenagers, obviously that's a big deal. I'm excited Absol about that. Unbelievable. And yeah. to care about those that a lot of people have forgotten about, because what I don't want a program for a bunch of rich white kids from the Bible Belt. Oh. I want a program for kids like me. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it uh, needs to be supported by people you know, who are mm -hmm. our age who may think, "What do we?" do, we can undergird every meaningful thing, not only with our prayers, but with our support. And God's given us the wherewithal and ability to no do doubt. it. Every but, one of us But can. folks, trust me that when I'm being with these young people, they trust me with that. Absolutely. Well, James, when I see some of the opportunities that we're talking about, that the Lord's given you and a handful of others, that to have people behind you that go, man, that's like me being in the room. Mm -hmm. I'm helping make that happen. That is absolutely the you know, And there's wisdom. The scripture talks about we're commanded to pray for our leaders. And, you know, everybody who says, Why? you know, you ought to say this and you ought to say that and you ought to go on a public rant against, uh, uh, you know, a national leader. Well, you know, I believe you do that privately. You share your heart. You, you share the word of God. And James, here's my word. Uh, if folks only knew what it, that they're Daniels being allowed access. Mm -hmm. And there's Deborah's, by the way. Absolutely. You know, us, us, us men need, I mean, godly wisdom mm -hmm. and, and a heart and, 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 and strength, you know. So there's Deborah's, there's Nathan's, there's Daniels in that room. And to think that I could help a Daniel be in that room mm. or a Deborah, yeah. you know, or Nathan. And, uh, you know, James, for a long time, you were the Nathan, you know, from the, from the pulpit. And here's one thing I've learned in, in 30 seconds. I can, I can impact somebody from the stage. I can impress somebody from the stage, right? I can even... Uh, inspire somebody from the stage, but I can only imprint somebody up close and personal. And so for us to realize, and it's not, a, oh, you know, I need to be in the room. I think if you're faithful to share that, whatever God's put, put on your heart. And we talked about people of our age. We got a lot of folks, we're like the old man on the porch Get off the lawn. What's wrong with these kids today? They don't know what they're doing. They're just, you know, and we're the old man or the old woman on the porch. Well, but we've got to pray for this next generation. Absolutely. Invest in this next generation. And we've got to be willing to encourage some folks who have the ministry and the influence, but also the opportunity to imprint. And that imprint, as you know, is lasting. So there's a paradigm shift in what real ministry is and what real influence is and, in this day. And our prayers is so often what brings these different, let's say, transformative moments into reality. Yeah, yeah. And all the things that God's allowed us to do has been undergirded by prayer and by support of people who know it depends upon love expressions and support. What you're doing, and we're going to put the title of your student leadership uh, uh, group up again to, to learn you. what you're doing to get young right. people in, because it is phenomenal. Would you join me and me in just saying thanks to Jay Strack <laughs> for being a blessing to so many people, thanks, and you are being a blessing to leaders in every area, and thank you for the encouragement you give us. I want to show you right now what uh, we're facing in, in trying to rescue people from sexual trafficking. And it is something that is so big on our viewers' hearts that we've got a, a group of our supporters who say, James, we're going to give a matching gift to double whatever you give to help rescue these girls from sexual trafficking. I want you to watch closely, and I want you to let God direct you in how you support what I believe is so critically important. I think you'll want to help. As you know, borders between Nepal and India is wide open. 
And that's when you see an exodus of Nepali children, especially girls and boys. They are taken from remote villages and then they are brought into the border towns. That's when the traffickers are ready to take them out of the country through promises of jobs. And so that's just a front many people are given. And uh, many of these girls, um, they, are, they become slaves. You know, so we stop them before it happens. Our program is what we call interception prevention program. And when we see them coming in a rickshaw or a motorcycle or even a taxi, we try to stop them. So we bring them to our information booth, which is right at the border gate. So our team, as they are questioning this, these ladies, some of them go to the police. And the police comes and they figure out, okay, we have a situation here. She is not to travel to India because that's why we are here, to save, to help, and to rescue. We have an amazing story of a victim of trafficking that we were able to intercept and rescue just last night. And sitting behind me is our staff and uh, Amrita, who's 29-year-old young woman, but she had no idea during the course of this, the whole process, she was dealing with a trafficker to take her into India and use her in brothel. Now that we have turned the trafficker to the police authorities, and she is now in custody at the moment. Once the girls are intercepted and rescued, you know, we have to have a shelter, a restoration place. So our, our program has been very successful. We have been able to intercept and rescue women and children. So it's a full service program is what we do from interception, rescue, sheltering, and prosecution. It's like a cycle that we do. Lord, I just want to thank you for the miracle that we just watched and heard made possible because of love, your love in Jesus' name. You see, God plants these precious people. And now to be able to think, and this is how God knows we need to be able to support wholeheartedly our law enforcement all over the world and here with such appreciation to have the right laws and enforce them. So important. When you get them working with people of compassion and you can intercept a problem and then actually prosecute someone that's part of the problem while you're rescuing and restoring others and the thousands and thousands mm -hmm. that have been rescued from very young, even mm -hmm. sometimes six to eight or nine years old and, and rescue them and, and get them before the traffickers get them or right after they've kind of gotten their tentacles on them to be able to, to get them to escape, but then also to take them whatever age we get them out to be able then to restore them. That's what the safe house does. And we've even created places that we've never been able to show on the air, but they are so secure that once we get the people out and in, nobody can come in and get them. It's just a miracle what love has done. And then to think that our viewers who are so moved by compassion and the love of God to get these people out of this horrible pit of, of destruction and despair, uh, you put up a matching gift. Oh, a $320,000 matching gift, that's a tremendous amount of love to just double the love effect. It takes an average of $128 to rescue one person to get them into the restoration process. Now then, the 128, if you can do that, will rescue two. And I always go for as, as large a gift as I can get. I don't think people need help protecting their money. I, I want to get you to invest it in, in the kingdom impact that love can make and the gospel makes. $1,280 rescues 10, but now 20. It'll be doubled. Would you right now dial that number or go online and get your bank card and say, I'm going to rescue one? It'll be doubled. Or God's given me the ability to rescue 10 with a $1,280 gift. It'll be doubled. We've got a beautiful promises book to send you that'll inspire you and bless you. We've got Name of Jesus throw that's absolutely beautiful. Uh, you, you will absolutely want to put this in a, a prominent place or have it uh, where you can just uh, get the warmth from it. If you ever come to our studio, we keep it quite cool in here. You <laughs> might say, I'd like to get one and one at the door because it's cool. But we're going to send this to say thank you for the gift you make. And then we have the beautiful arms of the shepherd bronze that is so pretty. 
for those of you who will make the $1,280 gift, knowing it's going to be doubled in its effect. Thank you so much for your help. Thank you for putting arms of love around people that have been so hurt, so abused, and misused. Thank you for rescuing them. God bless you for it. Thanks for making that call. Behind the bright lights, there is a darkness where a world of innocence is lost and abuse runs rampant, scarring the souls of children with no one and nowhere to turn for help. With bodies broken and hopes crushed, these young victims are trapped in a never-ending nightmare. Today, you can shine the light of God's love in this dark world to reach, rescue, and restore these young ones to the life God designed for them to live. With a generous $320,000 matching gift, now your gift of $128 to help rescue a child can be doubled to help two children. Your $64 gift will be matched to help rescue one child from the horrors of human trafficking. And a $32 mission rescue gift will be doubled to $64. And with your donation of any amount, we'll send you the Promises of Christ gift book filled with beautiful photographs, scriptures, stories, and commentary from James Robison. With your gift of $128 or more, you'll receive the Names of Jesus Throw. This beautifully woven blanket features the names of Jesus in many languages. It'll make a lovely addition to your home and serve as a beautiful reminder and spiritual comfort to the Lordship of our Savior. Finally, please consider a gift of $1,280, which will now help rescue 20 children, and you may request our beautiful new bronze sculpture, Safe in the Shepherd's Arms. Please call, write, or make your gift online. Betty and I just want to say from the bottom of our heart, thank you so much for helping put arms of love around the people that are too often used and abused and overlooked and forgotten. Thank you for the love of God through you. Jay Strack, president and founder of the Student Leadership University. And uh, there's the website. I want you to look him up. I want you to pray about getting young people involved. And I'd like you to pray about helping him with what he's doing. Just ask him, how can we help? Because I promise you, Jay Strack has been a witness since I've known him. And I mean an effective witness. And I give God praise and thanksgiving for it. Would you join me in me saying thanks to Jay Strack? Thanks, bro. Jay, I love Thank you. you too. Really proud of you. Very Thank grateful you. for you. That means the world. Love your family. And just praise the Lord. Thank, Thank all of you for watching life today. Encourage your friends to watch. is God loves us. The enemy hates us. He will never offer anything good. Sheila Walsh, tomorrow. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.